Hare Krishna. Welcome to the second day of those 18 days where we'll discuss about what happened on the second day of the Kurukshetra war and what we can learn from it. The first day was very bad for the Pandavas. Bhishma was unstoppable and he wrecked havoc in the Pandava camp. On the second day, the Pandavas decided to form a Kraunche formation. Uh, that is uh, the particular military formation which they hope will be able to resist Bhishma's aggression. And uh, they strategized, the Shudhimna was their commander, the Shudhimna discussed with Yudhishthir, Arjuna. And the next day, they march forward, confident with their new strategy. And then, now this is a huge battlefield. The battlefield was several miles in width and far more miles in length. So different warriors would engage with different warriors in different places. So if we compare it to a sports match, it's not like, say, cricket, the action is happening at one place. But you could say it's like, it's like a tennis match where um, it's like a one tennis team playing with another tennis team and there are different courts and on each court one one player is playing so like that there were many different warriors fighting with each other at different fronts and Duryodhan had been delighted with the victory that he had got on the previous day and he was confident that within a few days we will win Bhishma will led by Bhishma we will crush the Kaurava, the Pandavas. And he, he goaded, incited Bhishma. The great work that you did today, completed today, uh, did, that you did yesterday, completed today. And Bhishma charged forward. And he fought with such ferocity that again the Pandava warrior, uh, soldiers started fleeing in dismay and despair. Bhishma was just unstoppable. Who, whichever warrior came in front of him, he was just mauled over. And seeing this, seeing him unstoppable, Arjuna decided to charge toward Bhishma. That had been a topic of discussion in the previous evening's meetings that Arjuna had been reluctant to fight with Bhishma. But this time he knew there was no stopping. Uh, and especially seeing how Bhishma was fighting, Arjuna started fight, attacking fiercely. And as Arjuna started charging toward Bhishma, then several other warriors came on the Kaurava side to help Bhishma. And Duryodhana and Alya and other warriors came over there. And on the Pandava side also several warriors came to assist Arjuna. And as the fight moved forward, Arjuna overall started overpowering all the Kaurava warriors assisting Bhishma. And he bet them all back and then he started attacking Bhishma fiercely. Now Bhishma was fighting, but Arjuna kept charging forward, charging forward. He stunned Bhishma and then he charged forward and started breaking havoc in the Pandava camp, in the Kaurava camp rather. And then as this was happening, uh, Duryodhan seeing the devastation in his army, he, he charged up to Bhishma and he said, Oh, grandfather. Can you not see how Arjuna is moving through my army like a farmer might harvest crops? Please stop him. Please protect us. Bhishma looked at Duryodhana with angry and sorrowful eyes. He says, fight upon Akshatriya's duty. He really had no heart to fight with Arjuna. He had his chariot turn around and he charged towards Arjuna. And Arjuna and Bhishma kept fighting with each other. So Arjuna had already wrecked havoc on the Kaurava camp. And as they kept fighting, 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 it was like a stalemate between the two of them. Elsewhere, Drishtadyumna, knowing that he had taken a vow to bring down Drona, charged towards him. And although Drishtadyumna tried various means to overpower Drona, Drona was expert and he countered all of the weapons of the of Dishudumna. 
Duryodhana took various celestial weapons and he attacked Drona. And Drona used his own celestial weapons to stop them. Duryodhana tried again and again. When Duryodhana had been born, he had born with a prophecy uh, that he would be the cause of the death of Drona. And in terms of sheer skill, Duryodhana was no match for Drona. But in terms of this confidence, that conviction that he would be victorious, that was what powered Duryodhana on and on. And although Drona held him, held held off all his attacks, Duryodhana kept attacking. But again, here also there was a stalemate. The day's major fight and the major was between Bhima and the Kaurava forces. And the second, the first day was Bhishma's day. The second day turned out to be Bhima's day. Bhima was killed in various weapons. Normally, when the warriors would assemble. they would all have the chariots and from the chariots they would fight with bows and arrows but on special occasions they could use other weapons also every warrior knew which uh, new basic fighting with various weapons and they were specialized in particular weapons so bhima when he would normally enter into the war field although he is celebrated for his mace fighting he was a good archer also and he would normally fight with um, fight from a chariot and if he got close to a particular opponent then uh, he would take up his mace and he would jump and fight with the mace so on this day with bhishma engaged elsewhere and drona engaged elsewhere the two key protectors of the kauravas were already engaged and bhima took this opportunity and charged upon the kaurava forces and started destroying them seeing this devastation being caused now duryodhana was engaged with bhishma trying to protect bhishma from those who were assisting arjuna satyaki and others so seeing this the kalinga ruler ketumat came forward to stop bhishma because to stop bhima rather because bhishma, there was no other prominent warriors there to stop bhima and also another king sutayush or the king of the nishadhas came forward and both these kings shutayush and ketumat were fearless and powerful and they charged toward abhima with their huge armies arjuna abhima countered both of them and started destroying their forces although they fought heroically bhima's charge was impossible to resist and bhima was destroying their forces and overwhelming them by his attack even his archery skills and his sheer anger with which he was fighting uh, bhima especially had been the most wounded emotionally by the insult that had happened to draupadi he had the he was the most bellicose among the pandavas and living silently in the for 13 years in the forest and including one year incognito had been unbearably painful for him and now all his anger came out it was not that those who are great devotees they don't feel anger anger is a natural and even a desirable response to injustice it is how anger is expressed anger when, when there is anger or outrage on seeing something which is very bad then that can activate us that can energize us and that can empower us in a way few other things can but the challenge is to keep anger regulated to not give in to arbitrary or excessive displays of anger but to channel that anger in constructive action so bhima had was driven by this anger and his anger had been waiting in his in his psyche in his in his heart for years as the pandavas had waited in the waited for their exile to get over and now he came forward all that anger he was channeling it constructively he was not letting it become destructive uh, he had not he was not fighting arbitrarily excessively or he had waited for the right time for the kurukshetra war to start and now was his opportunity so with whatever opportunity he had now he said bringing out all his anger and he was just unstoppable he overpowered the the two kings of kalinga and the nishadha kings 
and at that time shakradev was the son of the kaliga king ketumath he came forward to fight and he was also powerful he showered enormous number of arrows on bhima but he countered all those arrows and as bhima started getting more and more angry you know arrows were not shots enough for him to vent out his anger no there are, there is arrows you shoot from a distance and there is like contact fighting where you use a bow or a sword or we use a mace or a sword to actually physically come in contact through those weapons with the uh, with the opponents and he wanted to use that to do that as he was fighting so as the combined attack of various opponents shuta yush ketumath shakradev as it started destroying his chariot and his charioteer uh, charioteer got wounded his charioteer was destroyed arjuna bhima jumped off his chariot and initially he was still using his bow and arrow but now he started using a sword and and with that sword he just swinging around and countering whatever arrows were coming toward him he used his formidable prowess to charge upon shakradev and destroy him and he gave out a roar his roar was filled with so much anger so much fury that it struck terror in the hands of the watching cow in the hearts of the watching cow was soldiers seeing shakradev killed by bhima his brother another who, who, who was another son of ketumath this was bhanumath he charged forward the bhanumath was on a huge elephant and he was charging towards bhima who was chariot charioteless he had a sword and there were various warriors attacking him from different sides he was just swinging his sword round and round and round and he was countering all the arrows that were coming toward him if any arrow came and hit him his body was like adamant adamant and it he just managed to tolerate all the wounds that came upon him with his own strength of will power and with his armor and when he saw this giant elephant and the warrior atop the elephant charging toward him bhima did the most stunning of things uh, his opponent expected him to flee if a giant elephant is charging what would normally anybody do just flee in fear but bhima decided to do something utterly unexpected and stunningly daredevilish instead of turning away he just started running straight toward the elephant and everybody on the battlefield was just shocked flummoxed what is he doing and even the elephant and the elephant warrior what is this person doing he was running straight toward the elephant and he got a momentum as he was running toward the elephant and as they came close he just leapt up and the attack was so unexpected that bhanumad was utterly unprepared bhima just charged up right up to bhanumad and brought his sword down and he just cut bhanumad's body into two parts and he fell on the ground and as now bhima was on the elephant and he just quickly turned around and the elephant had when the elephant had seen bhima move up he had tried to move his trunk up to try to stop bhima from going up and to wanted to catch him but bhima had just been too fast in one swift move he had finished off the king and in another quick move he turned around and the elephant's trunk had was still raised up with one forceful lop he cut off the tongue uh, cut off the trunk of the elephant and the elephant screamed in pain and as the elephant fell severely wounded bhima leap leapt off and gave a huge scary roar of victory so fierce was his attack that now not only was he roaring fiercely not only was he fighting forcefully this was a stupendous display of skill and strength wherein a warrior without any chariot had f within moments destroyed both the elephant and elephant warrior the kauravas how can we even fight against such an enemy 
a terrified and kalinga soldier started fleeing ketu mat somehow try to get all of them together to get them to stop and watch to stop and aid in fighting but none of them had the courage so at that time Kal- the kalinga king ketu mat himself charged toward bhima and seeing him charging some of his warriors got some courage and they started fighting and bhima just marched forward plowing through whoever came in his way and within a short while he had just devastated the entire remaining army of kalinga so the nishadas marched forward shutayush and ketumat both were attacking krishna above uh, bhima along with their armies but bhima just fought forcefully and fearlessly and he brought down within a few moments he brought down shutayush and then he neutralized ketumat and he roared in victory as the day moved to a twilight you know it became clear that the kauravas had been badly battered while their major warriors had been held in a stalemate bhishma and drona had been held in a stalemate by arjuna and dushyumna bhima had wreaked havoc and and in that way that evening when duryodhan assembled in his camp he was dazed he was shocked he was disbelieving how could this have happened how had the table turned so severely in just one day yesterday he had been celebrating his victory and thinking that within just a few days the war would be over in fact he had expected that bhishma might finish the war on that day and far from finishing the war he was reeling under the considering at the consequences of a brutal defeat at the hands of bhima so this is the nature of life this is the nature of war and of life at large now yesterday's laurels do not count today every day is a new battle every day is a new fight and yesterday's victory doesn't provide a victory today one cannot become complacent we all have to be vigilant it's like just a, if it's a sports match a batsman may be batting very well and the batsman may have hit uh, maybe two successive boundaries or two successive sixes on the previous balls but that doesn't mean the next ball the batsman is going to hit well It just takes one ball to get out so the previous successes don't guarantee today's success of course the skills and the values that we have learned to gain our previous successes and we have whatever we have learned from those successes those can help us to face today's battles but today's battle has to be fought today using the lessons of yesterday but they have to be fought today and if we fail to fight today's battles today if we don't we don't fight well we will lose so duryodhana had become complacent after the first day's battle and he paid a heavy price far from him being able to tout his victory he had to lick his wounds and think what had happened so for all of us life goes through ups and downs there are dualities some days we may feel low we are all facing a inner war against our own minds moods and sometimes the minds moods work positively sometimes they don't work positively for us but whatever happens we persevere sometimes we we succeed sometimes we fail but if we stay committed if we stay competent if we stay determined we can go through the phases of failure without becoming disheartened and we can go through the phases of success without becoming complacent and we can persevere towards the ultimate success that the reversal in fortune that duryodhana experienced and the lesson of avoiding complacency and arrogance and overconfidence and knowing that we need to be vigilant and competent that is the lesson we can draw from the second day of the kurukshetra war thank you very much hare krishna